Welcome to News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we have Adam Dash, Vice Chair of the Board of Selectmen and Chair of the Municipal Light Board, joining us today to talk about to talk about the governance of Belmont Light. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Welcome, Adam. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Good to see you. So for those who don't know much about electricity in Belmont, can you give us a little background, Adam, on Belmont Light and how it's different from investor-owned utilities like Eversource or National Grid? Sure. Uh, Belmont Light is owned by the residents of the town of Belmont. We own our own electrical utility and have since 1898. Uh, and Belmont Light uh, buys uh, power from various uh, producers. Uh, we have gotten more and more green, buying more solar and uh, wind and uh, hydropower, but we also buy grid power. And that power comes into the substation down on Flanders Road, and then we sell it to the consumers, uh, which is all of us. And that's how we have our electricity in town, as opposed to going to Eversource and, buy, and having an account from some investor-owned utility where their main goal is profits for their investors. Um, in our case, um, Belmont Light is here to serve the residents of Belmont and is owned by the residents of Belmont. It's not a for-profit entity. Okay, so so Adam, the Light Department uh, or Belmont Light doesn't report to the town administrator like like you know one of the other town departments or the the school the school department and the to um, uh, the school committee in the case of schools. Um, so can you tell us a little a little bit, Adam, about how Belmont Light is governed and governed, and how that might change in the future? Sure. Uh, Belmont Light uh, has a general manager, Craig Spinelli, and the general manager is a strong general manager position where he pretty much runs Belmont Light. However, uh, the Light Board, the Belmont Municipal Light Board, which I chair and which is made up of the Select Board, um, the Light Board sets policy. And we've been doing things like setting policy to create more green energy, more transparency. We set you know, rates, things like that. So the light board is integrally involved in all of that, but the general manager runs the day-to-day -day of Belmont Light. And of course, you know, Craig Spinelli being very collaborative, we're in contact with him all the time, but he does not um, report to the select board, although the select board sits as the light board. Um, now there's also, Adam, isn't there a, um, um, a light board advisory committee? Yes. Uh, the select board created a number of years ago, a light board advisory committee. And what that is uh, made up of experts that the light board appoints. We have a really good group of people who have stepped up who are experts in the field and they advise us because I'm not an electrical or power expert, but they advise us uh, when they go through these policies to create policies or set things or do things. Uh, they've been having a lot of discussion on setting time of use rates lately. Um, so those initiatives that require the experts to look at and they look at it and they make their advice and we work hand in hand very collaboratively between what we call LBAC, the Light Board Advisory Committee, the Light Board, which is also the Select Board, and uh, the General Manager, Craig Spinelli. So Adam, I, I understand that there's already been one public forum. There have been discussions with Light Board members from other towns. Uh, current and former select board members, and of course, um, th there have been discussions among um, among you on the select board. Um, and there's another uh, uh, a second public forum scheduled for Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Um, can you can you tell us what what's driving these discussions about governance? Sure, this has been going on for many many years. I know when I first got elected in 2017. You know, I started bringing this up, although I, it wasn't unique to me. Um, it had been brought up before, but at least since my time, uh, I've been talking about what to do about governance of the light board, whether we should um, have the select board continue to be the light board, whether we should add people um, in addition to the select board being members of the light board, whether we should make the light board a separately elected entity, whether it should be a separately appointed entity, three members, five members, and all those various permutations. So. Um, that sort of, I brought it up and we had a lot of discussion in 2017 and I brought it up in 2018 I brought it up in 2019 and, and things obviously we, you know, our general manager switched to Chris Roy and then Chris Roy left and we've had COVID. I mean, it sort of keeps getting shuttled off, but right now we've been making a very concerted effort. Um, and Chris Roy really, when he was general manager, um, pushed really hard to do this to you sort of get, burrow down into this and find out exactly what we want to do, what we as a town want to do for the governance of Belmont Light, which was why we're having forums. We had a forum on December 14th, which was very well attended. And the next forum is January 28th, as you said, at 7 p.m. on Zoom. You can go on the 
Belmont Light website and um, get the link. I believe it's also on the town website. Uh, we'd certainly love to see everybody show up because we want to know what you think. Uh, the select board has been the light board since I believe 1938. Uh, and uh, at that, and since then, you know, there are some, some things have gone well and some things have not gone well. And the question is whether or not there should be more separation and there are pros and cons, obviously towards making it elected versus appointed, three members versus five, keeping it as it is, or just keeping it as it is and adding other people to it. And we created a matrix actually of, uh, at the light board where we have come up with um, all these different permutations We've had uh, town council take a look at how, what you have to do for them because some of them are harder and have to go to the state legislature and some don't. Um, how long it could take to implement them and then uh, look at criteria like ease of adoption, public accountability, operational efficiency, coordination with town departments. And we're trying to do the process that we've done with other things like this where we have objectively tried to quantify pros and cons and make sort of a list and number things and order them and come up and add them all up and sort of help guide the discussion. Of course, public input is crucial to that. So I, I did want to ask you, Adam, so I think there are some 41 municipally owned um, electricity providers in Massachusetts. Are there any common themes in how they organize governance that offer lessons for Belmont? Um, I would note that they are kind of all over the place and these various permutations. We are in the vast minority and that the select board is operating as the light board. Um, I will say that. Um, I, I just say it as a fact, it doesn't make it right or wrong. Uh, we do there are lots of things Belmont does that isn't always the same as what other towns do because every town is slightly different. And some of these uh, light departments are very large and some of them are not and some are rural and some are not. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of elected light boards in various towns. And so we've certainly wanted to talk to the other towns to see what their experiences have been um, and having elected, do people run? Do good people run? Um, are there concerns there? I, I mean, are there concerns about, for instance, rolling back some of the initiatives that we've been making uh, to get greener uh, versus um, keeping rates as low as possible? I mean, and would it be better to have it elected or appointed? Um, it's a, it's a tricky subject. That's why we want to get public input because this is a major, major structural change over a pretty large enterprise in town that people don't think a whole lot about probably, but is, you know, obviously if you flip the switch, you want the light to come on. So it's kind of important. Uh, we want to make sure that it's well run. Uh, I'm sure whatever Belmont decides to do will, will work out fine. We usually have a bunch of really good people. Um, and then, of course, what happens with LBAC if we have an elected light board separately? Do we need an advisory board or not? Um, they're just questions to go through. But the goal is to get this in front of town meeting in April is our goal. We've also been very clear at the board that we're not going to short, do shortcuts or rush things. If it's not ready, it's not ready. Okay. But um, the goal is to be ready. I guess uh, May is when the town meeting would be starting early May. Um, to see if we can get an article um, to do something, one of these changes here, whatever that may be. So, so um, you know, I, I haven't followed this carefully, Adam, but I understand that some members of the public are, are fairly vocally pushing for a separate elected light board to replace the, the practice of the select board constituting the, the, the current municipal light board. Do you have a sense that there's any emergency uh, I'm sorry, any emerging consensus based on the public forum that's already taken place, the folks that have been talked to um, before we, I mean, as we roll into this, this next public forum? Yeah, I mean, I think there's been some consensus that um, at least amongst the, the light board members ourselves, we've talked about how maybe the appointed isn't the greatest thing to do because of the power involved and no, no pun intended of what, what the light board would have that maybe having them be appointed is not terribly wise, um, especially since the light board hires and fires the general manager and the general manager is very powerful general manager under the law. So having that person hire, you know, having that person hired and fired to some group that's appointed and has no accountability to the public maybe isn't the smartest thing. That consensus seems to be coming out, although clearly no decisions have been made. Okay. Um, the elected light board seems to be the, the emerging contender, although I would say that there is a difference of opinion amongst the speakers at the public forums, as well as amongst the board members ourselves. Um, we're not there yet. That's why we're having multiple forums. And however, I think, I think it would be good. This has been kicked around for such a long time. We need to know what we're doing, move it or 
or not, take it to town meeting, get a vote, um, because it's been kicked around for long enough. And I, think, and I think we all agree, everyone agrees that we need to make a decision one way or the other. Um, so, so let me briefly ask you, Adam, about um, the governance structure and what the future looks like for the finances of Belmont Light. Um, and, and I'll just point out that, you know, um, in, in recent years, I, and I don't know how long this has been a practice, um, a Belmont Light has been making um, financial contributions to the town budget. I believe they're referred to as pilot payments. And, and um, some in town um, say that there's a, a problem with that, that that's, that's um, inappropriately subsidizing the, the town budget with resources that should be used by Belmont Light or perhaps returned to the, to the rate payers. Um, any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, the pilot payments that have been made by um, Belmont Light to the town really are just that. I mean, the town provides a lot of services, plowing the Belmont Light yard, for instance, um, and, and such, and providing DPW coordination. It's not as a, the, the it, it's one town, even though they're separate entities. Uh, everybody works together and provides services to the other. If no pilot payment were made, I mean, the town might just submit a bill to Belmont Light like it would to another enterprise fund, like the Water, Water Enterprise Fund, for instance, but that we don't do it that way. I think there was some confusion this past year because of the, um, the COVID crisis and the budget issues that we had in 2020 that um, Belmont Light front-loaded um, some of their pilot payment from the future and then is going to pay less going forward to make up the difference. So it wasn't an extra payment, but people saw this large number and said, oh, Belmont Light is being used to balance the budget. And in fact, that's not true. Belmont Light volunteered, didn't have to. Belmont okay. Light agreed to front load some money that they were going to pay the town as pilot anyway to cover the crisis and then would pay less later and we'd be right back where we were. But the town does provide services to Belmont Light. Uh, it's not a, it's, that's just a fact um, and doesn't charge Belmont Light for that. And the pilot payment is to make up for it. Um, of course, a, a light board going forward, you know, if they decided elected light board, they didn't want to do that anymore, then that would be their um, prerogative, I guess. So Adam, any other thoughts about, um, you know, why people should take an interest in, in Belmont Lights governance and perhaps attend this second public forum on Thursday evening at 7 p.m.? Sure. I mean, this is about the democratic process and the democratic structure for an entity that we all own. Um, this is our utility. This is a major business that has a lot of, <laughs> takes in a lot of money and provides the power that runs the town. And we all own it. We're the investors, if you will, by virtue of being a residents of this town. And one would think you would want to look out for your investment and make sure that the people who are running it are, are running it well, and that it's being the structure that it's set up with um, is well, well built. And this is an opportunity. We haven't made a change in the structure of the, of the light board since 1938 in this town. So this is not a small thing. And once it gets changed, it's very, very hard, as you know, to unchange such things. So whatever we do will be this way probably for the rest of our lives. So it's a matter of making sure we do it and we do it right. We'd love to get this up for town meeting in the spring. Um, but on the other hand, if, if it's not ready, it's not ready. But I, the way things have been going and the way we've sort of put everything on the calendar and done these forums and all, the, it's all timed out to get done in time spring and we're still on that track all right adam well thank you so much um people can find information about about this public forum on the town website and i think we may have it here as well um so thank you adam and i hope we talk again soon likewise nice speaking with you mike and i hope everyone attends the forum okay thank you bye